Hi everybody, it's John back again with another model inbox review. Um, this is a subject of a kit that I've built before, although I didn't build this particular version of the aircraft before. Because what you're looking at is actually a Curtis Model 75 Hawk in finish markings. Um, the one I did before was a Revell kit that I actually built as a Mohawk Mark IV in Royal Air Force markings. Um, which would have served in the Far East, around about Singapore area, around, around about the time when the uh, Japanese attacked Malaysia. Um, but this particular aircraft was served in the um, what they called the Continuation War against Russia in the Finnish airport, Air Force. And I'm actually going to build a Finnish Air Force aircraft. Of, um, and there's a reason for that. I'll get into that when I, when I go into the, air, the, the kit review. Um, we'll just start off with the, the kit itself. The kit is actually an SMER kit that I've got, although the SMER kit is just a reboxed Heller model of the Curtis um, Model 75 Hawk stroke P36A. Um, and we'll just, we'll just go into the boxing history as we normally do. The kit is actually quite old. It was released originally in 1966 as the Curtis 75 Model A3 in the French Army de l'Air service. Um, under the Heller label and the kit is actually a Heller original from 66 and that was the box that you usually got um, on the original release and then in 1967 a company called Buzzco um, also released this kit as a Heller Reductions Authentique model but I don't actually understand I don't know where Buzzco came into it, whether they were uh, an agent who sold the kit in the Far East or an agent who sold the kit in America. Maybe they were um, an Eastern European agent for Heller. Um, but Buzzco did release this kit a year after the kit was released by Heller. And it's exactly the same model that you get with the Heller release boxings. 1967 went on to 1974. Um, the model still, I'm pretty sure, only had one option of markings in the Curtis 75A3 in the French Army de l'Air campaign. Um, and it's exactly the same artwork as what you got with the original release in 66. 1974 went on to 1980 and they changed the artwork and the type style of boxing to this black border. Heller were quite big on this black border around about this era, 1979, 1978-80s. And this, this border carried right the way through to um, probably as late as 2000 when they were reissued in different style boxes. Um, and there's a reason for that as well. We'll get to that in a minute. In 1980, that was the boxing that Heller released the Hawk 75 in. Then in 1986, SMER started to release a large number of Heller's kits. And the Hawk 75 was one of the first that SMER released. And the original boxings are the, the boxes were actually box similar in style to the Heller mark, um, the Heller style of boxings with the black border around the edge, but they utilised a different artwork picture on the on the box lid, and this is what you got. Um, I quite like the French Army to their colour scheme, but I'm not a great fan of those red, white, and blue flashes on the rudders. And anyone who builds biplane fighters will know why. When you put the transfers onto the rudder at the back, you will always have a seam that doesn't meet where the transfers just sit and lie on the edge. And what you have to do is you have to trim the transfer down very, very um, acutely to the edge, the training edge of the rudder itself, and then fill that training edge gap in paint, and then seal the whole lot up in some sort of varnish. If you can get it to do that, then you'll it will come out with a much better result. But just putting the transfers on is, is awful. It's an awful result. But that's the SMER release, which came in 19, uh, 1986. And then in 1990, SMER went over to this new style of um, SMER boxings with the pink borders. And I've got a feeling this is the model that I've got. The issue is that I haven't got the box. The model number on the transfers is definitely 0841. I think that carried through for all of them, but I'm pretty sure that the actual kit I've got is of this model, the P36 stroke H75. Um, and again, it's yeah, that's 1990s release. They also went over to a blue style boxing 
in 2004. Um, and again, the same artwork. Um, the kit I've got could be this one, but I've, I've got a feeling it's the earlier rendition from the pink boxing. Um, I don't know, I've just got this feeling in the back of my head that that's what it is. So that's 2004 release. Um, 2018, Hella, under the new name of Hella SA, because Hella broke away from Humbrol Group when Humbrol Group uh, were bought up by Hornby. Hella decided to call themselves Hella SA and they re released this kit, Curtis 75A3. Um, I've got a feeling it's just got French Army to their markings, um, but you know, the proof is in the pudding if you buy the kit. If you've got this kit at home, please let me know in the comments whether it's got alternative markings, or whether it's just Army Delaire. be quite interesting. But that's 2018, and Heller have re-released this kit with a new type of box style and this artwork on the front, which goes back to their early days. Now then, there's a new company on the block that um, have released the P36H75 Hawk Heller kit, under the guise of Mr. Hobby Kits, Mr. Craft. Now, this particular kit, I'm pretty sure, has not been on general release for very long. Uh, it's either a 2018 or a very early 2019 release, but at the moment I've looked on loads of different websites and the kit is unavailable to purchase. So I've got a feeling that they did an original run, or maybe they haven't quite got the run into the circulation yet, but Mr. Craft are releasing the Heller kit and it's good news because the Heller kit comes with five options which include a Polish, a Finnish Air Force, a French Army de l'Air, a German Luftwaffe and a British RAF version um, which is quite interesting and I quite like the sound of this particular kit. I think it will have an impact on the market but it is basically the old Hella kit reboxed by Mr. Craft as they've reboxed so many other Hella kits in the past. We'll leave you with a nice image. Whoops, I don't know what that's come up for. We'll leave you with a nice image of the um a real life model H75. This is a C1 that's in flying. I think this aircraft is actually part of the Duxford collection. Um, and it's in flying condition in this country. I've seen this aircraft flying. It's actually in beautiful condition. And um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting aircraft to see flying around. Right, we'll just pan the camera down and you can have a look at this kit. Uh, not much to look at boxing wise because it's basically in a jiffy bag. And what I'll do, I'll just get, um, I'll get everything out to show you. And I'll also got something else to show you because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this model. Hopefully I can get all the markings out there. Now then, I'll put this jiffy bag to one side and I'll show you the, um, the instruction leaflet first. So I just want to open this up so you can have a look at the parts. Although the kit's old, it's actually quite nice. As I said, I've built this kit before and it's, it goes together quite nicely. It's quite detailed and it goes together quite easily. No fit issues, nothing like that. It's quite a nice kit. That's open. Right, we'll have a look first of all at the instruction leaflet. And one of the reasons why I'm going to build a Finnish Air Force one is because there are no decals that came with this model. The decals were missing. The instruction leaflet is A4 size. It's a typical SMER instruction leaflet. Um, it bears no resemblance to a Hella instruction leaflet in any way, shape or form. I've built a couple of Hella kits and they don't look anything like this whatsoever. I've got a couple of languages on the front here, brief history and some stats, technical details here um, on the front page. On the back you've got paint plan for the P36 C variant which flew in the National Cleveland Air Races in 1939 and you've also got um, <clears throat> the Army de l'Air option which would have been on the back of the box had I had the box but I haven't got the box. <laughs> There's On the inside of the first page you've got um, some more technical information here and there um, and a, it's in German I think that might be a third language and there's some um, information there and keys on how to do bits and bobs and that goes back to um, 
I'll be honest with you, that goes back to, it looks pretty froggish, or maybe early hellerish, I'm not quite sure. But those pictures, I've seen those pictures several times before, um, and they're, they're brief information on how to do certain jobs when you're modelling and bits and bobs. And there's, there's a key there for cement and do not cement, quite easy. Um, the kit builds in six stages, very easy. Um, the P the P36 stroke Hawk 75 had a floor pan, and this is actually represented in the model. In section one, you put the pilot and to the pilot seat, and then that goes into the floor pan. Um, and the flight pedals, the rudder pedals, are actually in the floor, so you can you can en enhance those as well. And then in section two, you build the main wings, which go together in three parts. In section three, you build the engine. Um, now I know that the the engine itself looks pretty poor, but I'm I'm going to be honest with you, it does look pretty poor. But when it's painted up, it's not actually that bad. It's not terrible, but it, you 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 could you could enhance this kit quite a lot with some aftermarket parts. Section four, you've put the fuselage and tailplane together, um, and the engine obviously goes into place there as well. And then in section five, you put in the airframe and the guns the speedometer, the pitot tube there, sorry, and the canopy in place, a couple of other aerials, and the gun sight. The gun sight on the P-36 was actually external. It wasn't an internal gun sight, and it was quite crude and rudimentary. In six, section 6, you put the undercarriage into place, and the exhaust nozzles for the engine itself, they fit into the aircraft um, just on the underside of the engine cowl in there so the the instruction and the build process is actually very simple quite quite rudimentary and pretty simple but i have built this kit before and it does go together quite well now then because i've got no markings i i looked for an option for something that i fancy doing um but haven't actually done one before and i've decided to go for finish markings now these markings are actually off um a Decaplast kit, and I've used these markings for the Decaplast kit, obviously, that the LAG G3 that I built earlier last year. And these markings are actually quite nice. They're, they're actually very nice. They're not made by Cartograph, but they're pretty good. I'll be honest with you, they're pretty good. And there's some finished roundels there, which is quite handy. Um, I also need some side markings. An MK145 does pretty good. Um, for the side of the fuselage, and the Finnish aircraft carried a red num uh, sorry a yellow number on the rudder, and the Airfix Messerschmitt 109G6 have two yellow number threes, which are perfect size for that job. Just have to cut that yellow triangle off from that other one, and then those will do. And there's a few stencils here, and they'll. They'll do handy for bits and bobs here. They're, they're pretty similar. The trestle mark stencils, which is quite good. Not an awful lot of other stencils on the kit from the finished markings, but there we go. Now then, the kit actually has interesting plastic. And you might be asking me, what's interesting about the plastic, John? Well, I'm going to show you. The transparency piece has three parts on it. Not a lot to write home about, but it's, it's satisfactory. The canopy piece there... It's not fantastically clear, but it's clear enough for you to see through it and it will paint up quite nice. The frame on it is quite nice. Um, oh, the other thing is there are a couple of locating pins on those side windows. Whatever you do, do not glue those locating pins because they will just smear the rest of your model terribly. But you could, in theory, you could... Um, you could just place a blob of glue on there quite easily. The pilot is of a different colour plastic to the rest of the kit, which is interesting. And he's quite a nicely moulded pilot. I quite like him. He looks quite good. Not a lot of flash on this model at all. It's quite bereft flash. That's the lower wing. It's a little bit rivet city, but it will do. There's a few rivets there that need sanding down. And the parts on this kit, again, they're not much to write home about. They're flash city everywhere. There's bits and bobs that need removing all over the shop. But the parts, they do fit together quite nicely. They're prepared quite nicely moulded. Uh, there's the engine, which I, showed you, which I told you before. It's not bad when it's painted up. 
the rest of the kit is much of a muchness and the quality of the kit is not fantastic I'll be honest with you so I'm not going to put everything back in the box because there isn't one I'm just going to put that there for you to show, see that and I'll just go through the gunk so I can get this video closed down the kit itself is an SMER Curtis Hawk model 75 it's molded in 172nd scale with a serial number of 0841 and its release date was 1992 but the original mold was released by Heller in 1966 there are usually decals for two versions, a French Army de l'Air French Air Force from about 1940 and the United States Army Air Force 27th Pursuit Squadron from the National Cleveland Lair Races in 1939. The kit comprises 37 parts on one grey plastic sprue and three parts on one clear plastic sprue giving 40 parts total. Dimensions of the kit are 4.5 inches long by 6 inches span and 1.75 inches high. The model comes in some options in 144 scale. Um, I'm going to rate these in star value by the IPMS community. In 144 scale, Mark I models produce a P36 stroke Hawk 75 and a Mohawk Mark IV. The kit retails for about 13 to 20 pound, and it's three star rated. In 172nd scale, AML do a Mohawk and a Hawk 75 for 19 to 22 pound. AZ models do a P36, a Hawk 75 and a Mohawk 4 for 15 to 18 pound. That's three star rated. Aoshima do a P36 for four to six pound, but it's very poor. Azer do a Hawk 75 and a Mohawk 4. No prices on that. Buzzco do the Heller rebox of the Hawk 75. No pricing on that. The Heller's original box of the Hawk 75 stroke P36 is available for five to 15 pound, and that has a two star rating. Intech do a Hawk 75, no prices. Mr. Craft do the Heller Rebox Hawk 75 for about eight to nine pound. MRC do a P36, no pricing on that. Monogram do a P36 stroke Hawk 75, that retails for anything between 250 and 11 pound. That has a two star rating. RS models build the Hawk 75, no pricings on that. Revell's kit of the Hawk 75 is between three and 18 pound, that has a two star rating. SMER's reboxed of the Hella kit, Hawk 75 and P36, is available for between seven and 26 pound. Special Hobbies Hawk 75 P36, which is a reboxed Azer kit, is available for 15 to 20 pound. And UPC do a P36, which I don't have any pricing on. In 148 scale, AMT do a P36A, 17 to 22 pound. Academy do a P36 and Mohawk 4, which is the Hobbycraft kit available for 35 to 40 pound with a two star rating eagles talon do a p36 hawk 75 no prices esi build the p36 for 15 to 18 pound and this kit um it's okay only one to two star hobbycraft p36 hawk 75 and mohawk is 25 to 30 pound with a three star rating they really like this and it's probably one of the better kits on the market in any scale jm gout 2k build a p a Hawk 75 in vac form, no pricing, as do medallion models. They build a vac form resin mod and metal model, no pricing on that. Must have models build a Mohawk 4, which is the Hobbycraft, Hobbycraft Rebox, for 25 to 30 quid. And Signum build the Hawk 75, which is their own mold, but no pricings on that. The kit's also available in 132nd scale by AccuScale, and it's P36 Hawk, no pricing. Azer do a Hawk 75, which is the Reebok Special Hobby Kit, 27 to 45 pound. This kit is very highly praised by the IPMS community. Craftworks build a P36 Hawk in 32nd scale, no pricing on that. And the Special Hobby P36 Hawk 75 and Mohawk Mark IV is available for 26 to 46 pound and that has a three star rating you can also get this kit in one sixteenth scale by ace whitman as a p36 hawk no pricings on it but it's a 1940s release so it's probably a fortune conclusions the smer kit has nice rivet detail and it's quite accurate and would be an inexpensive and easy build smer is a rebox of the heller kit and an old release with the Ravel and Monogram kits averaging the same in reviews. The AZ model is the kit of choice in 72nd scale, and Mark I model's release is amazing and well worth a bash in 144th. The Hobbycraft kit in 48th scale and the special Hobby kit in 132nd are the hot choices for a P36 or a Hawk 75 if you're looking for a larger scale model kit. 
The Hawk 75 is quite an interesting model, as it's the precursor to the P40 Warhawk and Kitty Hawk kits. Um, and I think the 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 Heller Stroke SME are offering is actually not a bad offer, and it's very cheap and cheerful to get hold of. I hope this inbox of you has been of some use. Um, any questions or, or anything that you want to put in the comments, just pop them in. I'll try and get back and answer as many questions as I can. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this video has been of use, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you very much, lads. Bye-bye.